Dale Grow, whose idea was it for Joe Ledoux to do the blood oath? What was the response like from the boys in the changing area? Thank you. Oh, they went nuts. They went crazy. Explain what the blood oath is. Well, he went out there with an axe. Because he's from Canada, dressed like a lumberjack. And he's Joe LaDuke from Quebec, spoke French. And a really, a scary looking guy. You know, if you ran across him on the street at night, you'd back up. If you saw him in a bar, I don't think anybody would want to tangle with him because he literally looked like he could kill you and not have any second thoughts about it. And he went out there and he sharpened this ax. I know for a day or two and he went out there and what he was trying to say during this interview. And I've never seen another interview like it ever that he feels no pain. That's what he was saying. I don't feel any pain. And he took that ax on his arm and he, cut his arm and blood dripping down from it and Lance Russell going nuts the honest going crazy because he's bleeding over there but he feels no pain so you're thinking damn he's pretty if he don't feel any pain he don't feel that and that doesn't bother him he's a tough son of a gun and I've heard more about that interview and I wasn't in Memphis when he did it but I heard about it when he got back I think some of the guys were even afraid of him. You know, you hear about WWE guys go back after having to do this thing. And it, hell, everybody ran to the corners. They got away from him because they were literally a, not afraid of him, but leery of him because uh, he wasn't a big talker. He wasn't a, he wasn't really friendly. He just go do his business have his match and he'd leave. So, and I never knew that Joe LaDuke traveled with many guys. He, he probably did, but I never, I never heard of anybody and he didn't go out to bars that I heard of. So he was a, uh, enigma. You like that word? Mm -hmm. He was an enigma to the dressing room. He was a mystery. So, and he can he can have great matches with Lawler, but that was Lawler getting him over, and then them going having a match. See, Lawler he 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 drew a lot of money in in Memphis, but he'd put them over first. He'd get them ready, and Jerry Jarrett he's passed on now, but he gave probably the greatest uh, summation of what wrestling is is it's like a kingdom, and you have a king like King Lawler. And all of a sudden, these fire-breathing dragons come in. And, you know, and then he would beat the underneath baby faces or the baby faces under Lawler. And he would look like a big challenge. Then they would send Lawler against him, and he would beat Lawler. Now he's, and him and Jimmy Hart, they, they're ruling everything now. And then they'd work it back around to Lawler would come back through a series of matches and, tag team matches and gimmick matches. And, and then f finally Lawler, when it got to the point of no return, he would win. And therefore order was restored into the kingdom till the next fire dr breathing dragon came in who, had, who was already there and breathing fire as this top angle with Lawler and the, the first fire. I don't know if I'm clear enough on this, but and it was a revolving door. And I could almost tell you in Memphis and most territories, say if they came in in January and they were a top heel, they'd be needing to leave by September because they've done everything they, they've done. They've done everything they can do. Now, baby faces could stay. Heels had to keep cycling through. And that was the same, same, uh, uh, strategy uh, that a lot of territories use. They kept the resident baby face and ran the heels of the fire breathing dragons, as I call them. They run them through. And if you look at Florida, they had Dusty and all those heels would go in and come out. Of course, they'd make money while they were there. Bruno in uh, in New York and in Boston and in the Northeast, 
He was champion eight years. And all they would do would look for that next big heel to come in and challenge him. And they did great business. It's like the Von Erichs in Texas. Same thing. Lawler in Memphis. Same thing. They kept the uh, Mr. Wrestling, Tommy Rich, in Atlanta. And that's the, that's the way it worked. So if a heel came in in Memphis, he had about a nine-month run before he would kind of get old. And he'd, he didn't have to move, but he should move because they would take him down to the middle of the card. Basically, they would take whatever heat he had, and it would dissolve itself if he ended up working with regular guys and not killing them. 